Bonjour mes amis. Today I want to show you a new thing that we're trying, which is me talking to the microphone and uh, talking to you guys and girls about a book I've read recently. Um, the pile of my collector's fallacy shame is pretty high, so I had a hard time picking something that I found useful. But instead of going with the most interesting book, I went with the uh, most recent book that I've read. Um, a friend of mine um, asked if we could read this together, not like read it aloud to each other, but um, he was going to read it and I should have read it too by the time he finished it and then we wanted to talk about the contents. Um, now it turns out that I finished first and still have the contents relatively fresh on my mind because I didn't take too long to um, yeah, finish this book. It's called Range, Why Generalists Triumph in a Specialized World by David Epstein. And it's a New York Times best-selling author, um, which you might also know, not it, him, um, who you might also know um, from various TED Talks, um, which are generally looking very good. Um, we use them at university, for example, to um, show people how well-timed um, transitions in presentations um, could be made as a, as a good example. So, um, yeah, David Epstein, look him up. He's generally a person who talks about sports. And since I'm not a person um, interested that much into, in sports in general, I wasn't quite sure what this book uh, was going to be like. Turns out that this book, which is uh, aptly subtitled Why, Why Generalists Triumph in a Specialized World, um, is starting, as we're going to see today, um, with a comparison between um, uh, Tiger Woods and uh, Roger Federer. Both are um, very good at their respective sports, but also very different in the way they acquired their skills. But the rest of the book is going into... Hmm, I wanted to say much detail, but that's not quite true as, as it usually is um, when you have a... Yeah, how do you say it in a, in a nice way? When you have a book from a from a from an author in your hand that is uh, publishing it's it's just this general style of um i want to say um american self-help literature it's it's non-fiction so um you usually don't expect too many stories in non-fiction books but the american style consists of many 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 anecdotes and all these anecdotes add up to a very very long book but <laughs> the um, the apartment's dog just went in with a present so um, which turns out to to make the book very long it's uh, 340 pages almost the last uh, 40 pages are acknowledgments and notes which is nice because I'm um, usually uh, Having having short appendix means that there's not much not much research you can use. Um, but we'll look at this in the process because today I'm going to start with this book, and you can um, watch as I am. Uh, yeah, making making zettel notes uh, from it. In German, we have a very nice um, verb to say uh, "verzetteln," which is the. Yeah, I'm not a grammar expert. Probably the uh, the, the gerund form of. Um, some base verb, something, something. Um, yeah, that's that's what we're going to do, and that's the format um, that I want to establish with you today. I want to finish this book with you together. Um, I'm going to uh, turn off the camera in a minute, and then you will be able to see the book on my desk as I flip through it, and I will record my screen um, as I take notes. Mm. Yeah, and in the end, I'm going to to comment on the process. I'm not going to do this live. It's it's I'm not I'm not a Twitch gaming streamer or something. Um, so 
you'll have a very condensed version. I'm probably going to take an hour, maybe more today, uh, to finish this. Not the whole book, um, the first chapter, which is the, actually not the first chapter, but um, the introduction. You're going to see it um, in the video later. Um, the table of contents says that the introductory chapter, chapter is uh, 14 pages long. And it's also very high on anecdotes and very low on information. So it's not that much work, which is good to get started. This is all very, very strange to me. It's probably also going to, or I am going to screw up in one way or another. We're going to see which ways, maybe, um, yeah, maybe my hard drive will fail. Maybe I'll uh, f forget to hit the pause or play button. Maybe the screen will be obscured with uh, my, my work break timer or anything. So please bear with me um, as I'm wrangling my way through all this. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode and let's start with the actual work. To really get started, I'm going to put on some Synthwave, 80 Synthwave, um, very, very nice mood to type. I found in the last couple of weeks. But I'm not going to play music here because this is not uh, MTV, you know? So, see you on the other side. Ha, huh. so here we are. And it's me flipping through the contents of this book to get an overview, basically. You know, there's this introduction stuff. Here I'm looking at the contents. I just see two marks, a graph, another graph, and that's it. I apparently didn't find more interesting stuff in this chapter. But here's the end notes. I'm bookmarking them to get better access to them later. Because, you know, end notes are a pain. Because you always have to flip back and forth and, yeah, I want to make my life a bit easier. Here's where I look up um, where this one mark corresponds to. And the, the source sounds interesting. So I put a mark there too. That part, hmm, well, doesn't look that interesting. There's no, yeah, what should I do with this? Um, and there's a graph and graphs usually are included because they're important, they're visualizing something and here I'm making sense of it because I didn't remember. And it's about the actual difference between experts and um, or elite and non-elite uh, athletes. Um, elites start practice later, kind of. You know, I mean, it's it's basically not later. It's uh, they they don't practice as much as early as new elites. Um, yeah, and there was just another footnote, uh, end note, um, which I split up into three sections uh, to get an overview. And here I'm looking at the contents of the chapter and uh, split it up too. That's that's the part about Tiger Woods. That's the part about Roger Federer, and that's the part where both stories which are introduced briefly, are connected and uh, compared. And where it gets interesting, where it gets, um, where it's about the deliberate practice um, school and how David Epstein thinks this is, this is cute, it's wrong. And with that, we are going to start writing an actual note. And, you know, the note is pretty simple at first. Um, it's hard for me to get the juices flowing, so to speak. I don't do this stuff very often. I most of the time take note of um, the web sources. So to get started, I create a note with a book title um, to have a starting point to collect thoughts. And then I create a bibliography manager entry to have a well a reference um, that I can use for citations. And uh, that's also a very low hanging fruit um, yeah, I'm also entering the uh, ISBN because, well, I'm a sucker for details and think it's worth something, but I don't know what. So, yeah, that's a work in progress or buffer note. It's a buffer note because it's not structured, so I don't want to call it structure note, but maybe it's going to be a structure note in the end. And here we start with the summarization of the claim. I'm um, not good at this, you see. Epstein wants to refute the usual claims that the one uh, 10,000 hour rule camp of expertise, blah, blah. You see, I've, I'm, I'm editing a lot. And now I'm looking up the um, 10,000 hour rule. Don't have it? Well, but I do know I had this book by Colvin. Um, talent is overrated. And talent is overrated, well, says it on the tin. 
Colvin says talent is overrated because his point is uh, that practice trumps everything. Uh, that, that you have to practice a lot and that the 10,000 hour rule um, well is the way to go. I don't I don't re really want to make an advertisement for the book so uh, that's that's all I could use this for. <clears throat> but but Colvin, Colvin is a secondary source as well. Yeah, so here I'm looking the stuff of the David Epstein sites at this point. Um, when he talks about the 10,000 hour rule and deliberate practice, he's, he's mentioning the, you could say, classic study by Ericsson et al. And I guess it's, it's my turn to finally create notes and process it myself. So I start with the search on the web and there you see well the role of deliberate practice there are two sources i'm comparing the pdfs by, with my naked eye both are scans one is by the new york times uh, oddly and i'm just picking the um the the, the less less weird looking one is it a good idea to do it this way i don't think so uh we will later see um how i get access to another full paper yeah, it's just uh, the same as before. I'm creating a, a reference manager entry for this thing. And then I figured, yeah, well, maybe, you know, hmm, the year, month doesn't say, maybe this is the DOI. It's, it's not the DOI. Don't know what it is. But here you see a proper source. Bam. Abstract. Paste it. The other information got them already. So up next, sip of tea and reading. I never read this paper. I never did. And it's quite long actually, 44 pages. Wow. So I'm skipping through all this and then looking at portions that sound interesting. Um, but I quickly notice well, this, this is really long and the actual studies uh, start very late. And what's all this all this stuff about? I have no clue. I still don't. I haven't read the first, I don't know, 10 pages, 11 pages now. Um, here's the heading study one. And that's where I think it begins to get interesting. There's a table. Tables, like graphs, uh, usually usually signifies something of interest oh, and there's more graphs but I don't want to do the statistics correlation analysis myself and I don't really want to see how um, practice is distributed over the course of a week. What I'm interested in is um, well, what does Ericsson actually say? Where does this deliberate, deliberate practice um, term come from and how is it defined? Uh, how, how did they how did they find out empirically that in this um, particular study, solo practice of the violin trumps everything else? I mean, that's a pretty strong claim, isn't it? And so I'm doing my best to summarize parts of the, of the table, which is pretty short. Still haven't read the rest, as you may have noticed. Um, this is sped up oh, like 400%. But you can still see that I don't pause to read the full text at this point. And then I decide, well, it, a list hmm, doesn't a list doesn't work. This has to be a table. Ah. I know I'm fiddling around to uh, get table flip running and edit the table visually because I can't stand um, markdown table formatting. So here I'm reformatting the table and uh, making my own small table with some highlights where I wondered why relevance, effort and oftentimes pleasure are high, um, 8.5 or 9 point something. Um, but nobody is, is mentioning, um, yeah, what was it? I mean, solo practice is the thing that deliberate practice is going to be about. But what's, what about the rest? Why isn't sleep mentioned? Why, why isn't Ericsson cited for the sleep patterns? I mean, the table has high numbers, but hmm. what have we here? Now I'm reading the full text. And 
you know. Yeah, solo performance, taking lessons, sleep. Um, all of these are mentioned in the table, but none of them seem to be important later. Solo practice special, why? It can be performed anytime. That's something I gathered from the full text. Which page? 380, if I remember correctly. Mm, still haven't provided the info. And here I'm doubling with the um, yeah, with the introduction. I'm trying to summarize what, what this is about, how, what the study is made of, and how it is structured. And and this is a part where I struggle. I mean, what, what is this study about? Um, is it an interview? I noticed the, the label interview, but it's also a diary and some other things according to the tables. I have a hard time uh, pinning it down and you will see me revising this section later again and again. Um, and we'll have a look at the final result in the end. But you see, I'm so out of practice and I never honestly was in shape when it comes to um, empirical study analysis uh, that I have a hard time making concise notes that summarize what a study is about and how it is conducted and if it's worth anything at all. Well, but at this point I can't do much else besides getting a better picture about the rest of the study, which I haven't read yet. Still haven't read it. Uh, more stuff, more graphs. Oh, damn it. Ah, there's the summary. That's nice. 380. That's where I let the, mm, read the claim. And here you go, the first break. Whew. 45 minutes of work done. Nice. And five minutes later, it's time to continue. That's how I work. I split my day into increments or intervals, sorry, um, of 45 minutes. And it's a timer that goes off and then tells me to, well, stop whatever I'm doing and take a break. I think it's important because whenever I skip this stuff, I feel very, very, very sluggish. And after the break, you know, the brain still continues to process whatever has happened before. After the break, I have new ideas to summarize what I've read so far and how I can approach this differently. Of course, I don't remember now uh, how I wanted to, but well. And here I see hmm, something, something interesting. Best wellness practice. Ah, no, that's not. That's not just another point. Um, not another list item. I want to add. It's. It's another thing um, that I'm interested in, which is, as you see here, which is about uh, napping. I mean, at, at last, at long last, someone says uh, in a study that napping is useful or maybe useful. Um, yeah, so far, um, they, haven't, they haven't analyzed this. It's just a hypothesis. Um, it's just a hypothesis that other people have probably uh, have probably um, analyzed better. But this is my first note on taking naps. Um, so I want to keep it. I want to keep it because it's one one way to um, go. And this is the result. Oh, I split it up, and there's a table. There's the intro. That's the result so far. And now I'm inserting the note about napping into the Ericsson note. Um, via link. I have a forward link from the Ericsson note to the note about napping, which yeah, really, really just does say that people nap after learning and practicing during the weekdays where leisure activities are um, scarce. Well, what do you make of this? I don't know. I don't make anything of this at all at this moment. I'm just collecting interesting pieces, pieces that seem seem to be important or useful rather. And here's the second study. Um, funnily, Ericsson says, well, here's another domain. What, what other domain is this? It, it's not about violinists and their study, it's about um, pianists? How, how is this different? It's music, right? I'm not a music expert. And I'm not an expert in brain activity and learning, um, which is something um, Sasha pointed out. I haven't thought about this um, at all myself. 
that uh, there might just as well be um, a different kind of processing going on in people who play the piano and people who play the violin. Because, well, you, for example, you move differently, don't you? Mm, but to me, this, mm, yeah, this, this didn't feel feel very interesting. Here I expand the notes and summarize it. And summarizing it is the the second study that is um, is easier easier I find. But one thing that came to mind, which is the emboldened part, there is that uh, some parts of the study actually contain estimates about childhood practice. I mean, if if you ask parents, well, your genius child, how much did it practice when it was younger? Well, it practiced all the time. You know, ah, it's not really reliable. So what a bummer, right? And here is the beginning of an um, introduction, a summary of the whole study as far as I'm interested in it. That is, you know, I still haven't read the full paper. I just extracted some points and I think well now is the time to stop because I don't want to become an Ericsson at all expert I want to know some points of data and something about the way that Ericsson at all came to the conclusions they came to yep and that's it I summarize it and read through the rest of the paper and the conclusions and then try to uh, paraphrase it as best as I can. And there's no, no quotations, just citations. You know, the difference is that it's a, uh, I can quote Ericsson on this. Uh, it's, it's my, the, this is my own words. And I'm not even sure if Ericsson at all state that huh, table flip crashed kind of. Uh, it's a bug um, that I just found out happens hmm. when I move and rename the file that is open in Tableflip. Um, and what I was going to say was that, uh, yeah, um, do they do they state uh, that that practice makes perfect? I'm not sure. Do they hypothesize? Do they just describe the phenomenon? Hmm. I'm just learning this mm, this stuff, you know making processing studies and here here i'm noticing well i don't even know what deliberate practice is how, how it's defined how, how does epstein define it does he cite anything specific no he doesn't um but he puts some words in quotes so i'm looking for the phrases that epstein uses and um yeah the the places that do pop up um uh, some of them some of them are interesting some of them are uh, misleading i find and i don't want to um adopt epstein's uh, definition so instead i skim the characteristics of deliberate practice section in the ericsson paper and here you see i quote parts of it because i think paraphrasing uh, at my at my level of skill in paraphrasing and in, in english and whatever it's just too risky better but it's it's just safer to quote at this point. Always remember to take a sip of water. I think I think I sh maybe I should have cut this out to save time. But maybe ah, maybe authenticity is worth a thing too. Ah, you see here I'm typing 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 typing. Deliberate practice depends on teaching. That's new, actually. I didn't notice it. Um, Epstein brought this up, kind of, in one of his quotes or phrases. And during the, um, what was it called? Characterization of deliberate practice? You know, this this section where the um, term is supposed to be defined. Um, there, there it's all about teaching and feedback and that uh, immediate feedback is important. So I think... I think I remember somebody else writing about deliberate practice being uh, here I'm inserting a link to the uh, deliberate practice concept note which I obviously deem to be sufficiently elaborate uh, into different notes 
Um, I mean, someone, someone somewhere wrote uh, that deliberate practice is impossible without teachers and feedback, that you cannot do deliberate practice on your own. Do you remem remember who said it? No. Oh, maybe when Sasha gets back, uh, I can ask him and oh, another break. But this time, I will not immediately stop and put on my, my pen and, and, and keyboard. I will continue to write and type uh, to get the thought out of my head. Um, what I was going to say? Oh, I was going to say that uh, maybe, maybe Sasha has a note about this and I can ask him to look this up. With the current state of affairs of the notes that I've written so far, you may have noticed that I'm not pausing all the time. This video is getting too long uh, at the current speed uh, already. Um, so please pause the video and look at the notes if you want to read them. Read them. Um, here I'm looking at the, at the uh, graphs again and try to summarize these because uh, the actual data uh, on the opposite page of the graph you see um, in the small thumbnail um, that's that's the end node with the 20 plus sources and I don't want to go through 20 sources and uh, cite the original and oh yeah you saw um, this arm is not my arm that's uh, Sasha coming back from wherever he was and uh, looking at what I was doing and giving me a bit of feedback asking hey why why are there no um, uh, no uniform prefixes for structure nodes um, why, why don't you put the double u no you umlaut um, in there and uh, huh, well a typo that I cannot resolve um, <laughs> dopens who knows yeah so that was uh, Sasha interfering a bit with his arm um, well and uh, yeah and this is me uh, writing a summary um, based on Epstein and not the original studies I'm not a sports whatever uh, reporter or um, uh, academic, uh, yeah, what's it called? Hmm. You know, that's I'm. I'm not interested in the details. I just want to know uh, where where does this graph come from? But yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. And here I'm looking up another thing. I just skipped the I, I just skipped the topic and um, went to the next mark I did in the book, uh, which is about a cardiology meeting affecting. The mortality of cardiac patients positively because people are the the um yeah, the doctors that is uh, are absent and here's sasha again uh, tell me well why do you do this manually just import it from pubmeat yeah import something from pubmeat i never thought about it and there's so many so so much information um, i remove most of it except the core information obviously um the full page PDF is similar to the full page HTML. Might as well look at this. The abstract is pretty long. I have no clue about the statistics uh, mumbo jumbo. And here is my humble, very humble start at making sense of this study. And yeah, what are these words? What's an AMI? What's, you know, I, I have no clue. So I'm gathering, I'm gathering terms and concepts now. High risk acute myocardial infarction. I don't even know how to pronounce these words in English. Ah. I'm, I'm not reaching my, my limit yet. I'm not crying, but I'm really, really struggling. And it's it's not a good kind of struggle. I mean, it's kind of deliberate practice, you know. I'm, but I'm not making progress. I'm I'm thinking, looking at things, and then the book, and think why, why do I need this? I mean, what what do I have so far? What do we have here? <sighs> Nothing. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know how to to rate this study. So I rewrite everything. The a quotation. Um, I think a quotation works better because all I really care about um, after Sasha um, interrupted me during, during the pause that you just saw, uh, the, the pause where I didn't type, that is. Um, he pointed out, yeah, what, what kind of study is this? is this? It's an 
epidemiologic study and what do you want to do with it? And I have no clue. I don't even know really what an epidemiologic study is and how it is different from other kinds of studies. That's, that's my expertise in um, empirical study uh, understanding, you know? Also remember not to infer a causation from this correlation. This is very important. And here you see that um, yeah, I'm quite happy with this. It's a quote and I state why, why I think it's funny and why I think it's relevant for uh, whatever I'm doing and whatever I'm interested in. And here I, I expand the information a bit. And well, so people die less um, cardiac patients, that is, if their doctors are available. That's weird and kind of bad, right? What do I make of this? Nothing so far, but it, it makes me wonder what does Epstein make of this? Why does he why does he cite the study? Well, he's trying to convince me. Um, I'm pretty sure of it. He's trying to convince me that specialization is not the cure to everything, because specialists, the doctors, um, cause trouble. They they harm people. That's his claim, which is not really backed up by the study. But it's a useful um, rhetoric device to make me think that he's right, that he's onto something. And that's not a bad thing, it's just huh, not useful. And here you see the final note. Yeah, that's all I achieved in two hours of work, including breaks. That's not a lot, it's not a whole lot. I mean, I did uh, process the Ericsson study finally, which is useful probably in the long term, but the range book, the introduction, hmm, not so much. I'm probably going to delete or have to delete parts of it um, yeah because what, what what do I what do I do with this well let's keep it here and see where things are going as we progress there's always time to clean up things later you don't have to to be perfect on your first try and I sure am not perfect on my first try this was a struggle I struggled really hard and I'm I'm still struggling when I think about what I've done here and achieved so far. And that's it. So tune in next time when I have a look at the first chapter of the book and let's see how far I get there in about two hours of work. Yeah, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.